test, test, test. Are you ready? Count me down. Good morning, Cornerstone Church. We're excited to see you all this morning. We hope you are ready for service this morning. We just want to welcome each and every one of you to our pre-service service. Amen. We're so glad that you can tune in today and join us. Wherever you are, make yourself comfortable and get ready to worship God. Make your living room an altar, your bedroom an altar, wherever it is that you are. Get up and get ready. Get excited because today is a good day. And it's time to wake up and shake off the tiredness and rejoice in the Lord and know that he has great things in store for us. And this is going to pass and we're going to be together shortly in service in a building. But for now, we're, we are the church body and we are going to worship him where we are. We want to thank you for tuning in. We want to inform you that we do have drive through praying. So this will be going on while um, service is live on Facebook. You can drive up to the church until about 11 o'clock. We'll be uh, doing prayer for anyone that night that might need anything at this moment. Amen. Yes, and we just want to we just want to encourage y'all guys. Remember to uh, like the the Facebook page and to subscribe or not to subscribe, but to share. You know, for those of y'all who are not very familiar with Facebook, you know, there's a little share button. We want to see it being shared because the, the reality is we want to get the gospel out into the world, guys. And this is one way that we're able to do it. You know, there is a, there's this meme going on, and, and it's, 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 it's the devil and it's God. And it's going around Facebook, and he's saying, you know, hey, I closed every church in America. And God says, yeah, but on the contrary, I opened up, every, I opened up a church in every home. And so that's the reality that we're, we're doing right now, guys. God wants to invade your home, invade your life, invade your family. But we also want to share that so that people can see the gospel, can see Cornerstone Ministries, can see the word that is flowing out of this ministry. And we just want to encourage you guys just to share that and get ready for what God wants to do in your life and in your home today. We'll see you soon, guys.
Well, good morning, Cornerstone, and to all of our new friends and family that have been watching online, we welcome you this morning. It's always an honor to gather together, and you know, it's just, I was rehearsing the scripture this morning. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. And here we are able to come into the house of all these different homes today and worship and praise him together. And so we're getting ready to jump right into our praise and worship service. And I just want to invite you and your family, uh, wherever you may be right now, stand up with us. We're going to open in prayer. Uh, get your hearts ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Well, bow your heads with me this morning. Father, we come to you in the name that is above every name. The name that is above COVID-19. The name that is above depression. The name that is above any disease that may be resting on someone's body today. And we declare freedom from all of these in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you are able to reach into every home by your spirit and touch those that have a heart and that are hunger and thirst after you. And Father, we believe this morning that if there be anyone watching this program that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, this will be the day of their salvation. The greatest gift that was ever given was the gift of your son. And we thank you for that, son. We thank you for that gift. You who we lift up. It's you who we worship today. Jesus, the Son of God. And everyone in agreement can say amen. Amen. We'll give a high five to someone there in your home. And let's give a, a good uh, a clap offering for our praise team this morning. Thank you so much. Feel it in the wind, you're about to ride it. You said that you would pour your spirit out. You said that you would fall on sons and daughters. So come.
Father, we bless you. We magnify you. Hallelujah.
We lift you high, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We extol you, Lord. There is none like you. So good, God. This is my revelation, Christ Jesus crucified. cross on which he died. Yeah. Now hear my absolution, forgiveness for my sin. And I sink beneath the waters that Christ was buried. Go with me. I will rise. I will rise as Christ was raised to life. Now in Him, now in Him, I
For some of you, you're learning that the church is in a building. For some of you, this is the first time that you've actually invited Jesus into your home. You come and you worship him in the church, but you leave it at the doors when you leave. And I sense that so strong right now in this moment that there's right now, people are actually inviting the Holy Spirit, inviting Jesus to come into their homes.
So here it is, my alabaster I'm keeping nothing back from who you are And no hidden treasure veiled by key You're a lifetime worth of worship And that's only just a start and here it is, my every waking day The minutes, hours, the years of endless praise For your worthy far beyond all I could say There's a lifetime worth of worship in the nuance of your name So let it rise
Nothing is mine but you, Lord. You're all I want. You're all I need. You are my all in all, Jesus. Oh. More precious than silver. Costly and gold, beyond compare, Lord, you are. Your word declares that your mercy endures from generation to generation to generation to generation. And we bless you. We magnify you. Holy is your name. Bless your people, Father. Bless your people, Father. Blessing upon blessing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face on you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing Amen. Peace for you, peace for you, peace for you. 
Amen, amen, amen. If you're blessed, I want you to give a shout out to God this morning. I want you to shout from your house. I want you to shout so loud. You know, a lot of people don't like to shout in church, but where's your, what's your excuse now? You're in your own home right now. So I want you to shout wherever you're at in your living room, in your car, if you are the blessed of the Lord. The Bible says, that the, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You need to shout, shout. I want you to shout so loud that the neighbors, they call the police. They say, you know what? There's a disturbance in the house. There's a disturbance in the house. No, there's no disturbance. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I know that I am blessed. I know that my family is blessed. I know that my children is blessed. I know what his word says. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the people have been trying to violently stop the power moving from God's throne from heaven on down. But the, it also says that the violent take it by force. And that's you, children of God. That's you, men of God. That's you, sons and daughters of God. We need to take the power of God and forcefully move past all the darkness of this earth. And we need to declare that we have the victory, that we have the blessing, we have the shield of faith surrounding us, that we are encamped in the high places, that we sit in the secret place, that we are encamped in the throne room of God. Father, I pray over each and every person right now viewing this church service, wherever they're viewing from, Father, that they would get a reality, a revelation, Holy Spirit, that you would reveal the truth to them right now in this moment of who they are in you, that they have a position that cannot be shaken. They have a position that they cannot be dethroned off of or moved off of or pushed off of, but they are seated in high places, in heavenly places next to Christ. And they operate in power, whether they know it or not. They have the power and the authority that you've given your church, your people. And may they come to the realization that that is living inside of them. The hope of glory, Jesus Christ. The hope of glory inside of them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have extended the sweet-smelling aroma of our worship and our praise to you, Father. Holy Spirit, Son, we know that you've accepted it. And you, we know that you dwell in this moment. We know that you are not confined by physical restrictions, by whether it be a building or whether it be frequencies or radio waves. We know that you are not limited to that. We know that you can move just like you move in a church. You can move in a house. You can move in a home. You can move in a car. Father, we say move right now throughout your body, throughout your church. Move in a way that we haven't experienced before. Do something you've never done before. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you honor and glory. Everyone say amen. Amen. And hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Bless his holy name forever. Amen. Well, good morning, Cornerstone family and friends, those that are watching online. Again, it's just a blessing to have you with us today. And I want to just give you a real quick announcement to the ladies. This coming Saturday at 10 a.m., uh, we'll be gathering together on Zoom for our, our Cornerstone Women's Bible Study. Uh, if you've not uh, gathered with us before, then go to the Women of Worth page on Facebook and there'll be some directions there on, on that Saturday on how you can link in and be a part of that Bible study. And we want to just take this time to invite you to do that. And uh, just, again, God bless you. Wasn't that worship awesome? Yes, I tell you, that last song is one of my favorite songs, and I always enjoy when, when our praise team does that. So, you know, let's just give our praise team a round of applause right now because they certainly deserve Amen. it. Amen. And I also want to take a moment because, you know, it, it, this just doesn't happen uh, with one person. This takes quite a few people to make this live streaming happen. And uh, so I just want to thank all of those that are in our media department, the Valdez family, Cody Walker, Rudy Gonzalez, Ernest, 
Sanchez, we thank you for all that you do. Let's give them a round of applause this morning. Yes, and they're 100 feet away. Yes, they are. Yes, Amen. They're Hallelujah. definitely 100 feet away from us at this time. So, again, thank you guys so much. Glory to God. Look, my wife and I and the church staff, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for the faithfulness of Cornerstone Church's family and tithing and offerings. You guys are just outstanding. I love hearing the, just the... It, there's a little noise that my phone makes every time someone gives, and it just goes off all day long. As a pastor, I just love hearing that. Just cha-ching, cha-ching. Oh, it doesn't make that noise, but it just makes a noise, and it's people being faithful with their tithe and their giving. And listen, that is what God's able to bless. Regardless of the day, regardless of the hour, regardless of the situation, God is still on the throne. God is still in control of all of our lives, and we trust in Him. The world, they're on their own. They don't have his covering, but we have a covenant and we are the children of the most high God. And his word tells us whatsoever we sow, we shall reap. If we sow to the good of the good, we shall reap. If we sow to the bad of the bad, we shall reap. Well, as far as in this house, people are faithful and they sow to the good. And we thank each and every one of you. We know that our family is healthy. We know everybody here is healthy. We, we know we've had some scares. People thought maybe they had contacted, but they hadn't. And we just thank God for his faithfulness. And we give him the glory and the honor and the praise. And I'm going to ask you, right where you're sitting at home, because we have this new way of ministering in, in live streaming world, hallelujah. But I want you, whether you're watching on your phone, whether you're watching on your smart TV or your iPad, whatever the case may be, right now just bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we have a covenant that doesn't change because it's written in the Word of God. That if we bring the tithe unto you and we bring the offering unto you, that you would bless us exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think, and nothing could stop it, absolutely nothing. So, Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of the people you've put in Cornerstone Church. We call our bills paid in full. We call our parishioners' yes. bills paid in full. All of our church members yes. paid, Father, before the red notice. Whoa. And we thank you. There's no one among us that are feeble. There's That's no right. one among us whose shoes have worn That's out. Right. But we are blessed and taken care of because you are the faithful God. So Father, we ask you to bless the congregation and their faithfulness with their tithes and their offerings. And Father, their giving, we just give you the glory and the honor. Father, those people from California that are watching, from Florida that are watching, from Washington. Father, those people from Nebraska, those people from Minnesota, those people from New Mexico, all around this country, it amazes me, thousands of people logging on and watching our program. We thank you and we bless you for the faithfulness of God. And we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, and we thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody says amen. Catherine, explain to them the ways well, you know, they can give. Before we, before we go there, there uh, I just want to let you know we also believe in the power of prayer. And so from at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sundays, we have uh, some of our leadership out there. They're in the parking lot, and they're geared up, and they're ready for you. Uh, that's one way that you can give. We have we call it drive-by giving, but we also have drive-by prayer. And so if, if you know, uh, some people just need that touch. They, they need to know that there's that person right there in front of them. And so we've provided that opportunity for you. And they're available outside right now. They'll be there as long as you keep driving in. So if that's one way you can give, drive-by giving. Uh, the other, and also they're there for prayer for you. And uh, you can also text to give and uh Hold on one second. All right. And uh, text to give. And what you want to do is uh, text the word give to this number, 833-459-0231. And you can also go online to the Cornerstone Church website. And uh, there's information there for you on how to donate and give at that time uh, this way. So, again, uh, text the word give if you want to do that to 833 459 0231 and uh, we're just going to give you a moment to make that decision on what's going to work best for you as our praise and worship team just brings uh, their worship uh, unto the Lord to you as, as you're giving this morning. Thank you.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you guys and ladies so very much. We thank you for all that you guys do in our praise team. One more time, let's give our praise and worship team a round of applause as they deserve it. They are so good. We thank God for each and every one of them. That one clap, I'm imagining thousands of clapping, Catherine. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people say, Pastor, do you have a hard time ministering to an empty building? <laughs> no. I've done it for years and years and years. I, I One time years ago when I used to be on network television and we moved our funds elsewhere, but we had a person, one person that was working the camera and one was directing. And it was so funny because the one directing had never directed before and used to have a little time card. And she was trying to get me to understand that there were 10 seconds left. But if you look at a camera, you can see the camera, but you can also see the person to the right of it. You know, it was no big deal. I knew I had 10 seconds left. There's a big giant clock right there. And, and I could count down, and, and, but this person didn't know I was looking at him, and then she starts getting cards and writing on him. He goes, nine, and he's eight, and then she's looking at me, because she, I wasn't looking at her. And when I got through recording, I, I just started laughing so hard because this lady was having a, uh, causing herself to have a heart attack, and I knew she was what was happening, but she evidently didn't know. And, and sometimes people think it, it's more difficult than it is, but the Word of God is easy to share. It's not something that's difficult. And particularly when you're a preacher and you're called to God and you know you've been doing this your whole life, most about. Now for me, it's going on 32 years. I mean, it's just one of those things that we understand that God is faithful. God has never left his word. God has never left, believe it or not, God has never taken his hand off America. God has never taken his hand off the nation of Israel. We're living amongst some of the most holy times there is. But one thing I want to share with you is what God began speaking to me concerning our covenant and I want to get into something with you here if you will turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 5 Joshua chapter 5 and I want to thank everybody for all the nice words and I didn't know y'all love my wife and I so much just thank you so very much sending us out your love we appreciate that I told my wife just the other day see somebody loves me amen hallelujah now, chapter 5 of Joshua begins reading like this. I want to go down in verse 10. I want to share something with you. The Lord spoke to my heart this week. Now, the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, at even as in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day. Verse 12, and the manna ceased on the morrow. The next day, the manna ceased. After they had eaten of the old corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Cana that year. So what we understand here is that which was provided in years past is now over. Just as I can tell you today, and I'm sent here to tell you today, that which we got along with and that which we got along with and that which we lived upon in the past, the day is changing. The hour is changed. Things are going to change in this country and around this world. We, sometimes we don't realize that, yeah, well, there's a pandemic going around the world and some people are dying. Yeah, but we don't understand behind the scenes God is working. God is doing things. It's not that God brought it. The devil's brought it. He's, everything associated with him is stealing and killing and destroying but through it, God is able to work, and His church has never met, met, met like this before, ever in the history of the world. We've not all gone on up line, you know, uplifting our programs and throwing it on live streaming. It's new to a lot of churches, but things are changing, and we're forced to change because situations have changed. And as I can speak to you, the manna that you had yesterday is not going to be enough to carry you out through tomorrow. It's a new day, it's a new hour, it's a new way, it's a new position. And all of us need to be ready for where we're going and where we're headed and quit worrying about from whence we came. And understand that there's a new day showing up. And it's something that I, it was, it was amazing to me. I was just the other day doing a study, and I talked to Elder Price about this yesterday. And I just typed in the words on my computer, and it was so funny, Pelosi has to go. I was just thinking this woman is causing so much trouble. And when I went, went to the computer and I opened up the sites, I was surprised to find that 99 of the, out of the 100 sites I found were Democrats wanting her out. It wasn't Republicans, it was Democrats. Tired of her because they want to go extreme left wing. They want this country to become a socialist country. And they feel that her and Schumer are stopping it. Well, there's a change coming. 
And what we as a church has to do, we don't need to be followers of the change. We need to be the leaders of the change and get ahead of this thing. For in Jesus Christ, we have the victory in Christ. We have already won, but too many of us live in the past and we don't realize what is happening in front of our very eyes. We're having people get born again that have never gotten born again. We're having people that have given their lives to Christ that said they would never do it. We're having movie stars giving their lives to Christ. We're having politicians giving their lives to Christ. On and on and on. Because why? They don't have an answer. But hallelujah, we the church have the answer. His name is Jesus Christ and salvation is found only in him. Well, the Hebrew children, they only knew what Moses had provided. And throughout 40 years in the desert, they had manna and they had what God had provided from heaven but now it's over and now they got to eat of the substance of the land which God told them go in and get to begin with and two I mean ten guys stopped an entire country from getting God's best and they wound up having to live 40 years in the desert because of ten bad reports but now he says you're going to be in a new place you're going in a new place you're here eat of the fruit of this land so we have to understand if we the church who have a covenant with God if we the church and we have a covenant of God, we're going to have to live God's way. We're going to have to do it God's way. We're going to have to do it how God says. And that covenant we have is a covenant of circumcision. And what I love about this, only the Hebrews practice circumcision with their children. Only, I, I, I still, for the life of me, when Abraham was told to circumcise all the men, I still, from this day, I read that and I laugh, I would have argued with God. I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cut all the men's foreskin. And if I was one of the guys getting the foreskin cut, I would have said, no, you're not. You're not going to do that. But yet, nonetheless, they carried it out. And now we see here the children of Israel getting ready to go into the promised land. The ones that were born in the desert, the 40 years of occupation in the desert, they all have to be circumcised now. Why? Because they're God's people. God recognizes the flowing of the blood. And this is what people don't understand about circumcision. It symbolizes the one who's to come. Christ Jesus is the one who is to come and he is to shed his blood. And he's doing it for all of mankind. And it's one of these things I just find it's amazing. But now in the New Testament, we're the circumcised, not made of hands, but made of the Spirit. Turn with me, if you will, into the book of Colossians. As the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Colossae, he's telling them, because they're arguing about you've got to be Jewish and you have to be circumcised in order to be under the covenant. And no, not at all. In fact, the covenant is to those who are circumcised by spirit, not with hands, but of the power of the Almighty God. Watch this, Colossians chapter 2. We'll go down, if we will, to verse 8. The Apostle Paul writes, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, through feigned deceit, after the traditions of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him, Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him which is the head of principalities, of all principalities and powers. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. We are buried with him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him through faith of the operation of God and who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting, it out, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that which con against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailing it to the cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So let no man therefore judge you in meat, judge you in drink, judge you in respect of holidays or of new moons or Sabbath days. So no man can judge us. We are free because we're in Christ Jesus. And our job is to make sure nobody judges. People want to judge what you eat. They want to judge what you're drinking. If, if, can, you, can you have a beer? Can you have what? That stuff is irrelevant. We're not thinking about what it's all about. It's about the heart of a man. You change a man's heart. You change a man's thinking. You change the man. You, you don't change that by just going against him all the time. You make him free to make decisions based upon the goodness of God. Well, now we're partakers of the covenant of blessing. We, we understand the scripture tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, he says that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. 
So if all the promises are yes, he's talking about the Old Testament promises. Now watch this. I'm going to take you and show you this. Go back to Joshua chapter 5. Now we're going to begin reading with verse 13 when we left off. And it came to pass when Joshua had done what God had told him, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and he looked and beheld and there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Don't you find it interesting that Joshua would go up to a man? Joshua's got probably a million men behind him and he's talking to one guy. This one guy that he's talking to here could have obliterated the whole million people. No problem. He said, No. But as the captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? That word there, no, I am the captain of the host of the Lord, is I am the captain of the host of Jehovah. I am. I am. He says, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose the shoes from off thy foot. For the place wherein thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. What was he telling him? The place of obedience, the place of God's plan, the place where God wants us, the place where we're following him and doing what he said, is the place of the blessing of God. Not doing what we want to do, doing what he says to do. And doing it how he says to do it. The tithe is part of what we do. Loving our brother is part of what we do. Being a helper is part of what we do. We don't do it because we're earning points. We do it because that's what we are. When he tells us to forgive, we forgive. He tells us to let go, you let go. When he tells you to pray for somebody, pray for somebody. If the church could just learn this, I mean, I don't know about anybody in the world that needs more prayer than all of our first responders. Have you taken time just to say a prayer for people you know that are a nurse or a doctor? You know, I just got to see my doctor this week, and I just asked him, how's it going in here? He goes, Daryl, it's doing pretty good. He said, I've gotten to test about 28 people. They've all been negative. He said, but, you know, it's just... It's still a little scary in here. And I said, well, doctor, I'm praying for you always. My wife and I lift you up all the time. Send him a little message and let him know we're praying for you and your staff. It doesn't take much to be a blessing. It just takes an effort. And so many times we put more effort in our remote control watching a TV program than we do just blessing somebody or praying for somebody. We are people of the covenant. Coronavirus is out there. Yes, it's a talk of the town. Everybody, it's out some preachers are saying it's the hand of God. Some preachers on and on and on. It's not God killing people. When judgment falls on planet earth, this earth will know it. It will be no mistake about it. He said plagues and these things will come to pass. It has to. They're going to come to pass. But the end is not yet for far worse things are coming. Well, hallelujah, we have a promise that they're not coming until we're removed. But we with our eyes will see what's getting ready to start. This is the beginning of woes, yes. It's just going to happen. It's in the time scale. It's, it's in the motor. It's going to happen. So what you and I have to understand is we're people of the covenant. So it's not going to happen to me, but it's going to happen to people in the world. And I thank God that we have a covenant. And you too can have a covenant. All you have to do is accept Jesus as Lord, and he'll bring you in the family. And all these covenants are yes and amen unto you also. Now I want you to turn with me to the last passage. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to show you something. Too many times we read over this, and we don't even know what it's talking about. And yet it's for us. Romans chapter 8. In verse 30. Actually, let's read verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Speaking about Jesus. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And them who called, he also justified. And who he justified, them he also glorified. Speaking of the church. Now what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He's on our side. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Well, no. Distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. Sword? No. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to the slaughter. And verse 3 says, no, that's not for us. In all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have been given the blessing of God. We've been given the faith of God. We've been given the favor of God. He is on our side. And remember, you're a child of the covenant. You're not just anybody. You're not just a regular person. I don't care what your family tells you. I don't care what society tells you. I don't care what your company tells you or your employer tells you. You are a child of the covenant if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are more than a conqueror. Those people don't even realize they're blessed to be in your presence. You ought to just, when we all gather back and we're all allowed to meet again, just let everybody you know, you have been blessed to be in my presence. No, don't say that to people. They're not going to like you if you do that. But you just know it underneath. Just always have a smile on. Now I'm going to ask you right now out in television land, if you're there and you say, Pastor, I'm not certain if I know Jesus Christ. I'm not certain if I've ever been born again. I don't, I've never been water baptized. If any of those questions you say, I'm not sure of, let us know. And we will make sure you will know. We will take you to the beach if we have to. And we'll water baptize you. And here we do dunk. We am completely immerse you. We don't just sprinkle you. We, we get you wet. Hallelujah. Because why? Some of you need to be washed. And you need to be under there a while. And then we'll bring you up and you'll be really clean. Hallelujah. Now you know I'm joking. But I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me right now. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I want to be a partaker of the promises of God. I want to be a person that has a covenant with you. A legal contract that is signed and sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ. He provided all of God's requirements and He's provided all of man's requirements. My job is simply to trust in what He's done. So today, here in my house, Jesus, I give my life to you. Forgive my past. Forgive my sin. I'm asking you to be my Lord and Savior. I give you my life in exchange for your life. And because your word says that if I ever blow it, then I confess it to you. Therefore, I confess it to you. I want other people. I will do what you said to do. And you said you're faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So in Jesus' mighty name, I declare, Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. And I will worship no other. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, if you've made that prayer and you said that prayer and it was the first time you've ever done it, let us know. And if you have not been water baptized, give us a call and we will have a baptism service for you. We can't get tons of people together, but we will make sure we get you baptized. Church, we love you. God bless you. This is Cornerstone Church. We're going to end with a worship song. Don't worry. My wife is coming back into view. Hallelujah. Welcome her back in. I'm going to end it. Is that all right? Sure. All right. Well, I just want you to bow your heads with me. Wasn't that a good word this morning? Understanding and learning about our covenant. So uh, with that, we, had, we were going to bring our praise team back in just to, uh, to close us in a worship song, but had a little technical problem there. So uh, prayer will work, right? Amen. So bow your heads with me this morning again. Father, we thank you for the word that's been delivered. And Father, we just ask as your children that we, we choose to take this word that was delivered to us this morning. And according to the Bible, it says to mix it with faith so that it'll produce in our life and and we came into your presence this morning to walk away father with our faith encouraged with our faith strengthened and we will do our part and we will mix what we heard father with our faith so that it will produce in our life i speak blessings over every individual every family that is tuned in today and we just say god bless you god bless you his peace prosperity and joy be upon you and yours today. Thank you, church. Sweet.